Hey everybody, it's Shane Blackledge here and you're watching Kingdom Minded. In today's video, I want to talk to you about one of the small group guidelines in Celebrate Recovery. This is very important and that's why I want to cover it today. So please listen to the very end as I give you my um, opinion on anonymity, this word, and what it means and why it's important to implement this during your open share group time. I have seen many violations of this guideline and it really creates chaos. It creates mess and it creates distrust. And so I want to go over this because um, I feel like this is really something that needs to be talked about. Um, there's recovery programs out there that um, don't follow anonymity and it's very, very concerning to me. So I just want to read the small group guideline real quick, and then I'll dive right in and talk about it. So the fourth guideline in Celebrate Recovery is anonymity and confidentiality are basic requirements. What is shared in the group stays in the group. The only exception is when someone threatens to injure themselves or others. You know, we are not to share information about our spouses, our family members, our coworkers. And this also means we don't discuss what is shared in the group among group members. This is called gossip. And we also have to be advised that it's confidential. It's anonymity. It means it's anonymous. What I share in a group with people I don't want it to leave the group. And so that to me is very important. And if you violate this guideline, you break the trust of the person coming to the meeting and sharing about the things that they are faced with. And I have seen time and time again when this gets broken and what is shared in the group leaves the group, it gets on social media, it gets into uh, people find out at their work and your place is in a safe place. Now what you have is a toxic place. And so I personally like Celebrate Recovery, the 12 step Christ centered program that deals with hurts, habits and hangups because of this guideline right here. Other recovery programs don't follow this guideline they have an open share where anybody can listen and anybody can share what's being said I, I think there's a time and a place for uh, a meeting like that but when you're dealing with hurts when you're dealing with your pain when you're dealing with life issues when you're dealing with stuff that you've never shared before with somebody this is very difficult to stuff to even think about opening up and sharing to the very thought of trusting someone or a group to share something that you've been faced with your whole entire life or for a moment. It's terrifying that this could possibly get out, you know, um, I mean, here's the deal. What if I was uh, a closet drinker and I'm an alcoholic? So I go to Celebrate Recovery because it's anonymous. And I go to the town next to mine because I don't even want to see anybody from the town that I live in to even know I am dealing with this personal issue. This could be very sensitive. And so we have to be conscious of this guideline. It's not a rule. It's a guideline. It's best practice. But it is a very good practice. I've been in recovery personally for about 20 years. Today, I have 16 years clean and sober from meth addiction and other drugs. Today, I no longer drink. I no longer smoke. I no longer do a lot of bad habits that I once did. And I would have to say for sure, Celebrate Recovery has helped me overcome my hurts, my habits, and my hangups. And today, I have freedom through Jesus Christ because of Celebrate Recovery. Now, this guideline, 
again, I just want to stress this out. It is so important that this is followed. If someone gossips, you need to go right to them and stop it immediately. You need to go right to the source, stop it before it hurts your celebrate recovery, it hurts your ministry, or maybe you have a, another faith-based recovery program. Uh, if you're even thinking about starting a faith-based recovery program, I would implement this guideline. The thing is, if you just have an open share and you don't have this guideline, it's going to be very difficult for people to want to open up because they're not going to feel like they're safe. And ultimately, the most important, the most, one of the most important things about having a recovery group in your church or in your house or, you know, um, for your nonprofit, your organization is to know that it's a safe place. You want to give people space, space to feel trusted, space to feel loved, space to feel like they belong and space to share what's going on in their lives. And I really believe that if you implement this guideline, you will have a very effective, safe group where people can open share and they can trust you. They can trust your group and they will begin to heal from their past and heal from their pain because of stuff that they need to let out, that they need to share with somebody will come out. But if you have an environment where it's not safe. It's just going to stay in. It's going to stay stuffed. Another thing is that's why I believe it's so important to have men with men and women with women or small groups. I don't believe it's a good idea to have uh, both genders coming together. Um, it can it can set up some risky, um, awkward, and unsafe situations. Um, especially when you go around sharing and stuff like that. Um, it's just not safe. It's just not best practice. So I would uh, stop doing that. Uh, so again, anonymity and confidentiality are basic requirements to having a celebrate recovery small group. Uh, this one is very important to follow for the DNA. I hope you are blessed by this video today. God bless.